this is hard hard to tell you, but in Vancouver, Washington, where I live, this past week we had a tornado. I was walking Bentley. I mean, I'm not used to tornadoes. And I looked over to the north, and I saw this really low cloud. It didn't look like a tornado. It, it was very wide and very dark. And it moved rather quickly. I thought perhaps it was a storm cell that was touching the ground. Bentley didn't like it. And you know who controls the locks? It's Bentley. He doesn't get to control a lot, so I let my black lab Bentley control the locks. Bentley wanted to come home, so we came home. And there, as I was watching that judge from Cuba, I don't know what her name is. I, I like her, though. She's very wise. She, she was just about to determine the parent of child number seven of some family that had seven kids but had no idea who the father was. That's kind of weird. And just as she's announcing her verdict, on comes the emergency broadcast system. So, I mean, I'm outraged. I'm, I'm getting my blood pressure up. But this time, it's a warning. It says, tornado on the ground in Vancouver, Washington. I, I didn't know what to do, so they told me, go to your basement. I don't have a basement. So what am I supposed to do? I don't understand how they missed this tornado. It, it, it's the weather bureau that sends me emails five, six times a day. Not a word from them. There was no word until the volcano sucked up a rowing club on Lake Vancouver and roared into the Fred Myers store tossing a big Freightliner truck on its side. Shopping carts were going everywhere. Crazed shoppers running around in the supermarket, I'm sure, not knowing what to do questioning as to whether there might be a basement in Fred Myers. I don't think there was. Fortunately, nobody lost their life. But you know, that's not the um, first tornado to hit Vancouver, Washington. I remember back in 1972, I was working at a radio station here called KKEY. And it was across from a grade school called Peter S. Ogden. And behind Peter S. Ogden was a high school, Fort Vancouver High School. We're doing the program, and it was a weird day that day in 1972. There was, believe it or not, the radio towers, Vancouver, Key had, I think, three or four, I can't remember now, I think they had four towers. And they all have these guy wires that come down to the ground. The engineer told me that he had to crawl out on his hands and knees because there was static electricity in the air. And it would come off of the guy wires to the tower down to the ground. And it was like World War II for him all over again as he crawled across the ground to go out and read the tower meters. The air was like purple. It was very strange that day. When the tornado hit, nobody was expecting it. It's before they had emergency broadcast systems, and none of us here in Vancouver had any idea that a tornado could hit. The school across from the radio station, Peter S. Ogden, now you have to picture this. There are miracles. And this was one of those miracles. The tornado came across between Fort Vancouver High School and Peter S. Ogden. 
It lifted as it crossed the playground. It sat down right in front of Peter S. Ogden's school, right in front of the flagpole. Bent that flagpole like a pretzel. I've never seen anything like it. I had to talk to the kids. I interviewed them. I went over. I had no idea what had happened. I mean, I'm like in shock. I wasn't on the air. A guy named Jack Turg was on the air when this happened. I asked some kids from the high school, what, what happened here? And the kids said, there was a giant dust devil, and we all ran toward it. And then it passed by that telephone pole that used to be there. And when it passed, there was no telephone pole. It was gone. So we all turned, and we ran the other way. This was a brick school. It had been leveled in the middle of a school day. We're talking miracle here. There were hundreds of children in the school. Yet not one child was killed in that school. I went over and helped as we pulled bricks one after the other. And there under the bricks would be a small child. And you would lift them up and their feet would start to go when they all ran. It was amazing. On the air at the radio station was a guy named Dave Collins. Oh, there's some stories about Dave Collins. But we're not going into them on this program. But David was on the air, and he was always a little hyper. I mean, he saw the drama in every situation, and an unknown event, like a schoolhouse being blown down flat against the ground loaded with children. It got David all whipped up. And he was on the air. You remember that Hindenburg broadcast? Well, this was a little like that. David, all the humanity of it all. Hundreds of children under the brakes. Parrots are listening on the radio. They are driving their cars at 70 miles an hour to get to the school. I talked to a policeman. His hat was in disarray. He came up to me. He said, you've got to get that guy off the air now. I'm standing out there in these cars. I'm going like this. And they're 70 miles an hour right past me. I could be killed. They ended up cutting the wires to the radio station to get David off the air. It didn't work. They forgot to cut the phone lines. David was on the air now with Portland big 50,000 watt radio station in Portland talking about the unknown event that had leveled Peter S. Ogden grade school. I was also on the radio to Portland and I said, I believe this based on what that teenager had told me about the giant dust devil and the telephone pole vanishing. I said, I believe this is a tornado that we're dealing with here took me off the air. He whispered into my ear, Damn it, don't exaggerate. I said, I'm not exaggerating. I'm looking across at the school. It's gone. You expect us to bring a news crew out there based on your exaggeration of a gone school? We argued and I learned that you don't call it a tornado on the radio until the weather service says it is a tornado. And Ralph we can't. You'll hear more stories about Ralph Weekend. He owned Key Radio. Ralph was an interesting sort of guy. All of the insurance adjusters were assembling at the radio station. Mine's well, since the power had been cut and it was off the air. Ralph was trying to buy tornado insurance to insure the towers against the tornado. But these were insurance adjusters. They didn't sell insurance. Ralph was in a complete frenzy, rushing from one agent to the next. I just want to buy a small policy. Ralph, of course, thinking that another tornado would hit at any moment. It didn't, not until last week. But that first tornado, there were six killed here in Vancouver. It was something I would never do. Thank you.